Hi guys, Sandy Bell with my fairy treasures. You guys like that how I painted one nail, one color, and they're almost the same color. I'm trying to decide which color I want to paint my nails. The darker or the little lighter beige. <laughs> Such decisions. Okay, anyway. We're going to go back and work on the in, on the inside of our altered file folder. And these are the clamps I was talking about. See these? And I just left them overnight like that. This is what they look like. You can buy a bag of them, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, everywhere. Okay? Even Dollar Tree has them sometimes. Anyway, so see how nice and flat it lays though? Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? Okay. So... And that's for anything mixed media. If you need to get it flattened out, you can just clamp it down. Or put a big heavy book on it. But I think the clamps work really good. Okay. I need to put these clamps away. Just a second. Okay, so now we're going to go to... Um, we need to colorize everything. We need to colorize all three pages. That's the next step we're going to do. So... Oh, actually, before we colorize, so we're going to do this one this and that okay but before we do that we need to gesso everything so let me get my gesso out gesso with a um, wet brush and the reason I do it with a wet brush is because I don't want to completely gesso it so you barely see what's underneath I want it to still I want all this stuff to be seen still so if you use a wet enough brush um, you'll still be able to see all the layers. And if you get too heavy handed with it and you can't see and you've covered up too much with gesso, then just take a baby wipe and go back over it a little bit. And um, you'll lighten, you'll, you'll take off some of the gesso. But as long as you wet your brush and then dip into gesso, You'd probably be fine. And what this do, does is it brings it back a little bit, which is what we want to do. Not complete coverage, just bring it back a little bit. And now we're laying down a nice surface to do um, to uh, take a baby wipe with acrylic paint over all of this. Okay. It gives a nice, some nice tooth. But at the same time, you can still see all those layers, right? Right. Okay. Like right there, I just got a little heavy-handed with the gesso. So I just hit it with just some more water without any gesso right on top of it. Like just right now, I feel like it needs to be a little less. Let's put a little more water, thin it out right on the page. Okay. I'm even trying to get some the gesso right here in the little crux where it folds we're going to put of course we're going to put some uh, acrylic paint in there hopefully i am in frame right now got a little heavy handed here so we just dipped it in some water and go back over that there we go Get some gesso right in through here so we can make sure we have a good surface to put our acrylic paint. Okay, done with that. And now we're going to turn on my blow dryer and we're going to dry this. If, um, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pause. I'm going to pause so you don't have to hear my, hear my dryer, okay? And, we'll be, and I will return when this is all dried with my blow dryer. Just a second. 
Okay, you guys, we're back. All right, so I went ahead and dried all um, dried all the pages with the gesso. Um, I got my little palette of like different browns. Okay, this is a um, that mustardy color that everyone loves. Uh, yellow orchid, yellow orchid. I actually got a great deal on this yellow orchid. It was regularly two ninety nine. I think I got it for a dollar for all this, and it's a fine touch acrylic paint, like a heavy body one. Then this is just a uh, cheapy, cheapy uh, burnt umber apple barrel paint, 50 cents, Walmart. And then this right here is some distressed paint, vintage photo right there. I got this for like a dollar also at uh, Hobby Lobby on clearance. Okay, now we want to take, we're going to apply all this with baby wipes because when you apply with baby wipes, what happens? You can see it makes it translucent so you can still see the layers. Okay. And that's what I'm all about. I love just seeing layer after layer after layer after layer. I think it just, it's what adds the magic. Well, besides fairy dust. Okay. Where is my mirror? I want to make sure that I'm in frame and I'm not seeing. Oh, there it is. You can't see what's in front of your face. Okay. Why did I just start in the middle? All right, let's just go like this. Usually I start in a corner. I don't usually just start in the middle. <laughs> little brain fart there. Okay, so we start with a little yellow ochre. Then we'll go in with a little bit of this burnt umber. And it's great because it colorizes without complete coverage using a wet baby wipe. If you don't have a wet baby wipe, get some paper towels and wet those. Just as well. All right, let's take a little bit more of the ochre color down here. And I kind of just, you know, switch off with all three of these colors and just keep going. Okay, so let's go to the top up here. Then we'll go with the burnt, um, the burnt umber. And I always go back over what I just did a little bit. So that things blend into each other. And we'll do a little bit of the Tim Holtz vintage photo. Ooh, I got a little heavy handed right there. Okay. If you get a little heavy, turn turn your baby wipe around where you don't have any paint at all and just wipe some off or get a new baby wipe, which I think that's what I need to do. There we go. And just wipe some of it off. I just got a little heavy hand right there. I'm going to put a little bit of that <clears throat> yellow ochre over here just to keep things mixed up good. A little yellow ochre right there. Okay. I also feel like I should need to throw a little. What the hell? I feel like I need to throw a little burnt umber over here just to keep things mixed up. Okay. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to go to the center one. This is the one in the center with the pocket. Make sure your pockets are still able to be opened up. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So let's go to this one here in the middle now. And let's start colorizing this. And for a minute, things may look funky. You may be like, oh, that's looking kind of funky. It's all good. It'll get better. It will get actually awesome is what it'll get. Just the more the layers go, the better it gets. Okay. 
And what I did right here is um, this is that um, like where it folds. I want that colorized too. So I went ahead and put some color in there. Um, a little yellow ochre in there. There we go. Um, what am I doing? All right, let's go to the vintage photo. here got a little heavy-handed it's not that I get too heavy-handed just so, you know a little extra paint can be on your baby white look you load more paint on your baby wipe than you want to so let's go back over it with a clean baby wipe wipe some off there we go um what do we want to do over here? Um, a little bit of vintage photo. Go a little dark into here. All right, so now let's go to the last section. And I already got this. Um, the dark umber out, so let's just let's use that here and there. Okay, let's use a little bit of the ochre. Vintage photo. I love this. I love all three of these colors, but the vintage photo is just so perfect. It just like gives that little bit of aging. If you just wanted to age a little bit, a baby wipe with vintage photo would be perfect. Like, look, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like right here. Look how pretty that vintage photo is. It just does that perfect aging. Well, of course it does. We all love Tim Holtz. Vintage photo in everything is just perfect, whether it's the, his inks, his paints, his sprays. I love it. The next time I do some work like this, I want to use um, his stuff, like his distress. We'll mix it. We'll use distress paints. We'll use his distressed inks. I have his distress sprays. We'll use his stuff. We'll do a whole thing where we use nothing but Tim Holtz, um, all the Tim Holtz products. And for the backgrounds, we'll use the Tim Holtz, all basically all Tim Holtz uh, scrapbook paper. That'd be cool. And it'll turn out cool because anything with Tim Holtz turns out cool his, because his, his stuff is cool. Love his stuff. Love Tim Holtz stuff. I love Tim Holtz. He's cool. Okay, I'm going to muddy that up a little bit right into the center. Perfect. All right, so this looks really good. You know what? This looks a little dark. I'm, I think I've got a little dark. Just a second. Let me lighten this up a little bit. Yeah, I got a little too dark in through there. Let's lighten that up. There we go. Okay, we're good. All right, so we have just a little bit of paints left on here. Do I want to use this for anything? No, because I'm going to use uh, stamps next. I was thinking if I was going to go through stencils, but we're not going to stencil today. We're going to stamp. But we do need to dry this, which will be a quick, quick thing to dry. So let me go ahead and dry this. I'll put you guys on hold again. Let me dry this and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do stamps. Um, with um, 
I'm going to use some archival ink, and it's in sepia. Olivia, Olivia Hernandez, love her. Um, this is the, the color I was talking about, because she I think she bought one of these last time we went shopping at Joann's, but it's called sepia. It's great, girl. This would be great for the stuff you like to do, all vintage and stuff, because it, it's a real vintage brown. So anyway, I love this. It's a foam stamp. This is one of the best stamps I've ever bought. Got it for 50 cents or something like that on clearance at Hobby Lobby, and it's just a phenomenal stamp. I love it. It stamps out really good, especially when this, you know what, this pad I think might be getting, this pad might be getting old. There we go. So, we'll work these two pages at the same time, then we'll work the last one. I think this is what I can get in frame, are these two pages. Yeah, then we'll work the last one. I've been so excited waiting for this box to arrive. I am so upset. Sorry about that, you guys. I have my iPad right here, and it was, and it was paused. So we're just trying to get, of course, more texture and design for the background. So I'm just putting stuff all over which I love. Okay. That stamp's done. Another stamp that I love for backgrounds is this. It's a bunch of clocks. Isn't that fabulous? Uh, yes, please. Okay, you know, I'm just going to also work this third page. I won't be on camera when I work that third page, but it'll be at least all done at the same time. and We don't have to go back. So I'm over on the third page right now. When I get over to the third page, it's out of frame. I'll let you guys know. Sorry, I have to close my iPad. It's like in the way. Okay. So I'm over here on the third page just stamping out this same stamp. Okay. Now, I love this stamp. Like I said, it's just all full of... Um, watch faces or clocks. I love it. I got this when I very first started crafting and I was like really into trying to collect tons of crafting stuff. I can't even remember what brand it was, but I seen it and I was like, oh my goodness. It's not Tim Holtz. You would think it would be Tim Holtz, but it's not. Okay. Just a second. Somebody said if your stamp isn't working good, try taking a sand block to it like that. So I just did. So let's see if that makes this stamp work better. I'm not sure if it's only my, my this old, it, the stamp is old. I'm not sure if it's the stamp or if it's my um, ink pad. My ink pad's old too, so. Okay, cool. That actually, I think that's a good thing. If your stamp is having problems, sand it real lightly with a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper. Maybe color gets caught, you know, it, your stamp gets clogged up with color even if you wipe it off or whatever. So it needs to be sanded off. I'm not really sure. Now I have so much going on, you're not going to see it's not going to be really obvious. It's just going to be um, hints of all these stamps on here. Well, that showed up really good. So I guess I shouldn't say that. Whether it shows up lighter or darker, I don't care. Cool. That showed up really nice. And the reason I want this in brown is because I have, this is all different shades of brown, right? And I figure it'll just look more in the background. Because as soon as I put something black on it, it you're going to see it, you know, it's going to be more prominent. Which we're going to put some black on with my script stamp in a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to the page that you can't see. I'll just do a little bit of stamping over there. Okay. 
This stamp is awesome because you can get a lot done with this stamp. Look how big it is. Now, can you put this on a stamp block? Yeah. But for what I'm doing, I don't need it on a stamp block. I'm not trying to get perfect stamps. Um, I'm just cleaning off my stamp now, just on here. I'm not trying to get, I'm just trying to get little bits and pieces. Okay. I was going to put more stamping on here, but for the sake of time, and I just don't feel like I need any more stamping, I think this looks really good. Um, oh, I know one other thing I want to do. Well, okay. Yeah, let's do it right now. Um, we're going to do some coffee stains too in just a second. But let's take a um, black archival um, ink pad with the script stamp. I saw a beautiful script. This is the script stamp. They're not cheap. They're probably 15 but use a coupon. Then you'll be able to pick them up for about 7 bucks. So they're not too bad. But it's just so effective. I advise everyone, you guys know I say it every video, get yourself a script stamp. I was at Hobby Lobby with Olivia shopping last week. And um, was I with her? With, uh, I'm trying to think if I saw it with her or not. I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah, I think I did. Anyway, I love that script stamp. It was a different type of um, script. And I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have different, since I love script stamps and I use them all the time, it'd be kind of cool to have different um, styles of script. And this one looked more like, um, like more Italian looking. So anyway, um, I was been thinking about it since I didn't buy it that day, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and buy it. Use myself a coupon and pick it up for about, you know, seven, six dollars, something, six or seven dollars, something like that. And I don't know if people get tired of me mentioning prices, but you know, um, all this crafting stuff can be expensive. But I don't make it expensive. So I like to share all my I like to share all my tricks with you so that you can do this affordably also. And so you can know that you don't have to spend a fortune to um, do mixed media. In fact, probably the less money you spend, the more awesome your stuff's gonna be. <laughs> because it's gonna be so much more original. So we have bits and pieces of script stamp all over the place. And I don't I didn't want anything even at all. Like everything else. I just wanted bits and pieces of script. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Actually, a little bit more on this page. Awesome. There at the top. Cool. So I'm just going to keep stamping with my script stamp till I get all of this script off of here. Okay, that's good. All right, I had a bunch more stamps. Look how much stamps I pulled for this, but I don't feel like I need any more. So we're not going to use all these. We use these two and we use the script, and I think that that is going to be good. Okay, let me put this away. Well, this is going to go over here. Next. Oh, let's do some coffee stains. Let me make sure you guys are still there. Yes, you are. Okay, so I like to do coffee stains with um, ink. So like any type of inks. Uh, this is a glitter ink by Bria Reese. This is an ink I got. These are all I got for like a dollar or 50 cents at that Hobby Lobby clearance. This is one from um, uh, Roundy or whatever. There we go. You can also you just use uh, acrylic paint like this burnt umber watered down. So. But I try to keep things mixed up because I have a lot of crap that I've been collecting because I always get it on clearance. So I'm always trying to make sure I use the stuff I have. So I'm just adding a little water in here. Um, 
you can use this is one from a I think it's from a paper towel holder that's it's skinnier in the middle but this is a paper towel holder that's fatter but I like to use this one that's a little bit smaller hole but if all you have is this one or a toilet paper one or a paper towel, the larger one use whatever you have I just like this smaller one so that's what I'm gonna use I don't think this was a paper towel. I don't know what it held. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, let's start making some coffee coffee stains. So what I like it to look like it's like you put your coffee you put your coffee uh, cup down and um, you spilt a little bit and it left a stain on your art. So that's what I'm looking for. It's a deep, dark one. Okay, that's enough on that page. I can get carried away with the coffee stains. Way too carried away. And I like to kind of mix them like that. Put two on top of each other. Okay. All right. I think that there are actually stamps like this. Does Tim Holtz have a stamp like this? I think he does. Okay. All right. It's like I don't want to stop. <laughs> All right, let's dry those really quick. Let's dry our coffee stains because I the next want to do is I want to do drips of um of this ink dripping down this whole thing. Okay? Uh, the second paint wipes stamps coffee stains script collage to billow more script very dust. Okay um, Let me just pause you guys. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is I'm gonna take this um, this ink, and you can do this with acrylic paint, and it's gonna be hard for me to stay in focus when I do it, but I'm just gonna take it like this, drip it down, and then I'm gonna take some water and follow those drips with water so it drips all the way down, okay? And we're just going to do it in the middle, in this section in the middle, but we're going to do it to both sides, but just to show you, and then I'll do the other two um, off camera. Okay, see how I've done that? Now, you got to lift your, your page up, hit where you put the ink at with water, and then let it drip down. So, sorry I'm out of frame. You guys will see it in just a second. All right. Just a second, I'll be back up there in just a minute. My camera's getting ready to turn off, you guys, so if it turns off, just go ahead and head to the next part. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the drips. Does that look awesome or what? I love it. Some people think you're creating a damn mess, but I think it's awesome because I love coffee stains and drips and it splatters. Oh, we're doing splatters too. Look how cool that looks. There's that side and there's that side. Let's just come in a little closer so you can see. Okay. Doesn't that look cool? Let me show you the other page. This doesn't have any drips yet, but it's going to. Look how aged it looks and how old and decrepit this all looks. And that's what we're going for. We want vintage, we want old, aged, decrepit. And we got there. I love this. Okay, so when we come back, we will be um, all ready to do the collaging. 
our for our focal points on all three pages okay so that is it for now i will talk to you guys in the next video if you haven't subscribed to my channel i'd love for you to do so if you can give this video a thumbs up if you could share my video that'd be great any comments or questions leave them below come visit me on facebook and instagram and i will talk to you guys in the next video for our focal points which is going to be beautiful collage work all right see you guys soon bye